Yeah. You're on. Willard and his bowling trophies. Uh, That's another good one. Uh, good morning. We want to uh, call the uh, Board of Selectmen meeting to order for Monday, March 19th. Can we honor America by standing and just reciting the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first order of business is election of officers. Like to make a motion? Sure, I'll make a motion that we make uh, Bill Marks and Chairman. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion passes 3 0. I'll be thank glad you. to pass the baton to you. Thank you. Before I do, gentlemen, thank you for your help last year. A chairman can't be a chairman alone. So thank you. Thank you, Lloyd. Do you have a vice chairman? We don't have any vice. <laughs> Our next order of business is a public hearing for cemetery abandonment for RSA 289 colon 20. Um, there are additional copies of the notice in the corner of the table here. Anybody that doesn't have one that might want one. And, and I will read the notice. I will, in, in abbreviated form, uh, mentioning each of the cemeteries, but not all of the ancillary information about them. Uh, for the purposes of declaring certain cemeteries abandoned and declaring such abandoned cemeteries to be a municipal cemetery, and for preservation and or restoration and maintenance pursuant to procedures of New Hampshire RSA 289 20, the town of Tuftonboro intends to declare abandoned the following cemeteries. Bean on Tibbetts Road, Briar Libby, Burley, Bradbury Burley, Canny, Nathaniel Caverly, Tristram Cop, William Cop, Dame, Fields, Edward Grant, John H. Graves, Haley, Ham, Horn Jenkins, Jones, Leathers Lefebvre, McKinney Glidden, Moral Samuel, Mount Pleasant Haley Walker, Neil, Neil Nathaniel, Benjamin Pierce, Piper, Andrew K. Roberts, Ronald McDuffie, Captain Alicia Smith, <coughs> Stevens, Thomas, Moses Thompson, Welch, White House, Whitney Glidden, and Woodsworth Doe, Woodworth Doe. That's uh, 34 cemeteries and burial grounds. Any direct descendant of any person buried in one of these burial grounds is requested to contact the Tufton Borough Selectman. This notice shall be read at a regularly scheduled Selectman's meeting on March 19th. If any descendants were located and grant permission, or if no descendants were located, then, in accordance with New Hampshire laws, after a public hearing, the town of Tuftonboro, by a majority vote of the selectmen present and voting, may declare these burial grounds abandoned. The vote declaring them abandoned makes the town cemetery trustees responsible for the care and maintenance of these cemeteries. Okay, uh, public hearing is open. Uh, Sue, as chairman of the cemetery trustees, do you want to speak to? Uh, sure. Uh, this is not intended to be controversial, but sometimes it is because of the, the language, as we've talked about. That that word "abandoned" is uh, it's what's in the state law and the word we have to use. 
doesn't mean that the heirs have actually abandoned them, but it means that we want to be uh, authorized to have legal access to them and to take care of them as we have been doing. We want to make what we've always been doing legal. And to do that, you have to go through the abandonment process according to um, the information we get from the state. We already um, did the, had this process for, I don't know, eight or 10 cemeteries that we have perpetual care funds for. That's, those are the ones we started with and the ones that we were doing um, more than once a year maintenance on with the first batch that we declared abandoned. These are the next batch that we're doing one, a minimum of one cleanup a year on. Um, they're ones that we don't uh, have descendants who are active that, that we know of. Um, and descendants still all have the right to access these cemeteries. Um, technically, the town doesn't have the right to access them unless, the, unless they're either declared abandoned or we get that permission from the surrounding landowner. So this takes care of that. It does give us the right, it would give us the right to access them as well as take care of them. It also gives us a responsibility to take care of them, which you know, the people in Tuftonboro care about their cemeteries and they've been paying to have them cared for for 50 years at least, I think. Well, in 1938 was when they started right, so cleaning up the old cemetery. That's 80, 80 years of, uh, of maintenance. Um, you have a letter from one descendant of the Candy Cemetery and I forget the other one. She was descendant of from two different cemeteries. We did. We, we received uh, <coughs> one piece of correspondence from one descendant. This is a uh, this lady's name is Martha Porter. Who lives out of state, uh, and she indicated that she's a descendant of the Welch and Canny graveyards, um, and uh, she had contacted us. Uh, we had some other sort of back and forth with her about the process um, and I have um, a uh, permission of descendant form here from her um, with respect to the abandonment. Um, she was uh, uh, I'll read a little bit out of the letter. I initially responded because a selectman put an ad in the Granite State News for descendants to respond. Um, um, uh, I, I do appreciate that Tufton Borough cherishes their historic graveyards and wants to preserve and maintain them. I feel they are doing a wonderful job. My permission is granted with the hopes that the future townspeople will also always continue to recognize these cemeteries as important and beautiful historic places that deserve to be preserved. So she had responded to the ad and um, in subsequent correspondence has sent us uh, a form with permission for, uh, with her permission for, right. for the abandonment. And I had a phone call over the weekend from someone who saw the article in the Great State News um, was a descendant of the William Cox Cemetery, which is up off Old Town Road. And um, he just was excited because he wanted to know where it was. He never knew where it was and wanted to go see it. <laughs> um, so that's basically the gist of it. This, we would like, to, we have money in our budget to repair old stones damaged stones and we've only we've used that out here at the townhouse cemetery we've used it at uh, Fedgley Blake and we also use it at Welch and then, at, then we realized that 
we shouldn't we shouldn't have done that because that was a private cemetery uh, without perpetual care. But <laughs> we did. But we would like to be able to take care of the old stones and do maybe a little more work. Like for the candy is one that I know where it's a it's a really early one and the stones are tipping and going every which way and there's a big pine tree that probably shouldn't be there. And we really would like the legal authority to take care of those things. Um, any other public comment? Well, I, abandon, I feel, is the wrong word to be using here. And uh, all of these cemeteries are on private property and the, they've never been taken out of the perimeter of the property. The owners are paying taxes on these cemeteries. And uh, some of these cemeteries, there are quite a few people that are like the Welch, uh, uh, Nat Neal Cemetery, uh, people have been using them to put urns in. Uh, uh, and I don't feel that they are abandoned. People are still, when I, well, I started mowing cemeteries in 1947, I think, when I was still in high school. Preston Piper and I rode around on my old mud buggy three years, and when we were getting three dollars a day for doing it. <laughs> Top and dollar. I, I've done it since 1988. Uh, and you go to these cemeteries, and some of them, you'll, there'll be an open book laid on a grave. Uh, flowers in some of these old cemeteries. And I don't feel they're abandoned like uh, the Welch Cemetery, uh, uh, Craig's uh, Welch's, uh, Kenny Craig's grandmother was a Welch, uh, Del McIntyre's mother was a Welch, uh, and the, the Thomas Cemetery's on the neck, they're still Thomas, they're getting old like I am, but they're still People that uh, come into these cemeteries, and I don't, I don't feel they should be abandoned. When they started doing this in 1938, it was just to preserve them. It wasn't uh, to have a button green in them. <coughs> and, uh, I think doing what we've been doing is the right thing to do. I, I don't know. Uh, this Lafeva Cemetery is actually on Brown property. When it was when it was found, Bob Straw was the caretaker at Lafeva, and he found it honey, and that's how it got called Lafeva Cemetery. But it's actually on Brown property. But the well, the the cemeteries are owned by the descendants of the people who are buried there. They're not owned by who owns the surrounding land. Right. So correct. So hopefully, mm -hmm. uh, in in terms of taxable valuation on on a property, that burial ground. Uh, it is not part of it's not a feature the, the, the value and, and should not be reflected in the assessed when valuation. That, when did that happen? When did what happen? That it became not a feature. It should, never should have been because it's not. No, it always was. It, it must have changed at some point. A cemetery because, was a feature? Yeah, because the piece of property that we own on Ledge Hill Road actually encompasses that cemetery and the handheld cemetery or home cemetery. And I think the thinking was it was originally in Bickford's that lived in the yellow house where my daughter lives. That it was connected somehow to that Bickford farm. The Bickford's buried there. And the same with the Thompsons, I guess you I mean at any number of places that it would be their family cemetery. Right. So 
So if the Thompsons had sold that homestead, they would still own that cemetery. The cemetery wouldn't go with the sale of the homestead. So it was abandoned at the moment of sale? No, it's the abandonment is the term the state legislature came right. up for this process okay. of giving the town the legal right to take care of them and the obligation. Right. The, 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 the descendants didn't necessarily abandon them in any of these cases. That's why I said at the beginning that it's an unfortunate word, but it's the word we have to use by law. So, and the cemetery trustees have no, no desire for lawns yeah, unless there's a lawn there, right? Uh, I think that some of the most beautiful cemeteries are the ones that are in the woods that are like the, the one up at uh, Camp Sentinel, uh, between Sentinel and Mara Vista, uh, where there's all kinds of uh, uh, handmade wreaths and things that are on the gravestones and so clearly somebody's there appreciating the well. serenity of the place. <clears throat> so if there's cemeteries that the surrounding landowner is taken care of mm -hmm. and they want to continue, that's fine. You know? It's not like we're looking for more work. We just we just want to make sure they're preserved. Well, the landowners have actually cut trees, logged out of these cemeteries. They haven't, uh, they own them. You've got a warranty deed of a piece of land. You've got a half tree that's worth a thousand dollars. They aren't going to let it fall down if they can get some money out of it. And it's been done. Oh, can we still do that? It's like the this townhouse cemetery is a deeded right away right through the front yard of Spiderweb Gardens into the old Haley mm -hmm. Cemetery, which was part of the Haley. And John Piper put his land into this townhouse cemetery. He sold you the deed, uh, deeded you the lot, and dug the grave. I mean, that was part of the deal. He got, that's how he got his living. And why this side towards the Piper House, the office here, is the way it is today. Nellie didn't want him to come any closer to the house. So we made the line of the old cemetery that's wider at the back so we could still keep selling lots and digging so, graves. If there are open lots in these and these graveyards, <clears throat> who controls those at, that, at this point? I think uh, the way the law reads that after uh, it's declared abandoned, the town would be the manager, but the town can't take away any rights any descendants have to be buried there. They have Are you to find any, uh, and pick, pick a cemetery, and they're, I think it went up on Mount Pleasant. Do you think you have any descendants of the Haley's? And there is one, and we've been up there. We've been up there. Haven't we? And I'm still waiting we went for up the to pictures. The, huh? I had them. I, 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 yeah. I put them on a memory stick. So, is, I mean, let's, is, let's, is, and I have no idea if any of this is accurate, but let's assume there are two open lots there. And I happen to own that property. Can I decide I want to be buried there? If you're not a descendant, you would negotiate with the town, the cemetery right, trustees. So that would, would give us the authority to make that. So you, the cemetery trustees now have taken over that role? Well, yes. Okay. Um, right. It's But the descendants come first. But you. Right. Yeah, no, I appreciate and, and, that. And you share that role then with the descendants? Yes. Yes. But those areas where there might be somebody bought a house 100 years ago and are not technically a descendant but they want to have their grandfather buried right, there. Right. They can come to you and petition to have that lot I think, open. I think, uh, I think as it stands right now it would be really difficult to get that, I mean if this passes, mm -hmm. it would be really difficult to get that permission because you can't tell today 
really what's underneath, what's underneath. Mm -hmm. and you you know I I certainly wouldn't vote to give permission unless I knew that that space was available and no descendant was going to claim it okay. any other questions or concerns statements you want to speak I know I'm I'm just taking this over. Thank you. Okay. All right. Oh, I, I'm not sure there was an answer to the question. So, if if you're managing it, someone's not a descendant, and they want a lot, and you do feel that that's clear, you have no one's underneath. The question was, does the town get money for selling that lot? Like a, you the, the town would have the authority to sell that lot at, at that point. Um, that the, the, a whole other question. The money from that sale goes into uh, a, a cemetery fund that can only be used on uh, work on cemeteries. And is that the same as for the cemetery? Do those fees that are Yes. Garnered from sale of lots, it goes to work yes. on cemeteries. Yes. So it's kind of a policy that it would apply to. But I think, I, I don't think the cemetery trustees are going to have the authority to sell a lot, let's say, at, at the Mount Pleasant Cemetery. If I own that property upon which the cemetery sits, I think we would. I don't think That's you what would. I'm I don't think you own that property. I don't think you actually own the cemetery. Well, it's in the deed, so I don't know. I, I guess it's a question we need to ask. But I would think mm -hmm. that if there was no direct connection to that property, and some citizen from Hawaii wanted to, a cemetery with a view, it would be very difficult. Then the cemetery trustees could sell a plot to that person. I think it would be difficult to sell it to the current owner of the property, but we can figure that out. Oh, you mean receive money for it? Yeah. Okay. yeah. No, I don't, I'm not, I'm not saying Trust we, me, we have no plans <laughs> to sell any lots of any of the old cemeteries. But I don't think it's <laughs> a matter of the authority to grant the right of burial. It's just the ownership. Right. Our assessor is here today. I don't know if you'd like to ask the I think it's just getting more confusing if we get him in here. Just so. About the ownership of that thing. Oh. <laughs> okay, any other? Uh, I'll make a motion. Do public input. Yeah. 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 Any other public input? Okay, I declare the public hearing closed. I'll entertain a motion. I will motion that we approve the cemetery's trustees' um, abandonment of the listed cemeteries. I'll second. Okay, any further discussion among the board? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The uh, motion passes 3 0. And uh, so we declare these 34 cemeteries and burial grounds abandoned in accordance with RSA 289 20. Thank you, folks. Thank you for your work. All right. Thank you, young fellow. Um, Next, we have public input. Any public input? Mm -hmm. Yes, didn't have enough. Um, two, two things left over from town meeting. First one is, you know, the, the first article on the library where I proposed a motion to not authorize the uh, selectmen to expend the money, to be agents to expend. Um, I think I still believe what I said was correct, that once we allow you to be the agents, you get to go ahead and spend it without any further input from the townspeople. And you spoke, to, you know, in opposition, saying that, oh, the selectmen at some point have to be named agents. I, I, don't, think, I don't think that's accurate. I don't think the selectmen ever need to be appointed agents. I think they can be, and once they are, they get to spend it for, in the alternative, we vote to spend the money and then you don't need an agent because the selectmen automatically become the agents. So I wish you would check on that. 
see if that affects the uh, outcome of that vote. Meaning? Because you gave out. Your, your feeling is that if the <coughs> people decided to spend the money on the library, that's, that would be a separate vote from the establishment of the... Uh, no, I feel like what we voted the other night gave uh, you guys the right to go ahead and spend that money. Yeah, it did. And that's not the way it was presented by you guys to the people. Yes, it was. <laughs> what, I, what I explained, and perhaps it didn't fly over the head too far, was that it doesn't eliminate the necessity of us petitioning the trustee of the trust funds, for instance, and the treasurer, we submit a bill that we're going to spend some money out of that reserve fund. It now has to comport with the other language in the Warren article, which is for the construction of a new or renovated library. So the, the issue that I was hearing on the floor the other night was, well, you guys can spend on anything you want. Well, we can't spend on anything we want. We can only spend it on a renovation of work. You can spend it on anything you want on the library. Right. Right. And I don't think that was how it was explained to the public by you. So maybe just watch that part of the tape, see if okay. I'm, see if I'm imagining it or if it should be. Like no, but I, and I think I got to be honest with you. I think that there's there's benefit to that language beyond what was argued on the floor. In that, I really think the library of trustees is going to revisit their design. <coughs> and if it's going to take another twenty grand to come up with a design that's a million dollars. Then I'll spend the 20 grand tomorrow. I mean, I, and I think I convinced my fellow selectmen to spend the 20 grand. But if we don't have the anything, we can't go anywhere. Well, you have, the, they, you have their fund. They have their fund. They can spend any time, any way they want. Yeah. But it may, it may come to a point where we decide we'd like to have some more information about something different. <coughs> I have yeah. you know, yeah, but I don't think that I don't think I don't I, know that the public understood that in the in okay. the conversation. And I don't think that, and I suppose it'll take another twenty years to get over it. But I think at some point in time the citizens have to say, Okay, the board's open, they're not gonna piss away money. And well, you can think it all you want, but the point I'm gonna make is that probably not a cent of that money's gonna get spent. Now, at that point, next year's meeting, are you or Max going to stand up and say, thank you for not spending the money? No. It's going to be forgotten that the implication from last Tuesday's meeting, or last Wednesday's meeting, was that we were going to be profitable with those funds. And we're not. And it, I would it's be, not that. I would be appreciate, appreciative if, at the point at which we were found not to be profitable, we're it wasn't. It isn't that at all. It's that I felt like the townspeople should have the vote to spend it, rather than just dumping it on the selectmen yeah. and not understanding. And I'm questioning whether they understand what happened, what they voted for. That's the question. And I, not, I'm not. And I understood well, that argument when you were making it on the floor the other night. I, I guess I observed that. Uh, in general, I believe capital reserve funds, when they're established, uh, are established with selectmen as agents to expand. Well, that's the new way, the new and, recent way. Yeah. Uh, and I, I believe that most of the voters understand that. Uh, that it doesn't, it, it doesn't mean in a particular situation that this huge amount of money is going to be taken and spent by the governing body without any input from the legislative body, but it does provide an avenue if, for instance, some design work needs to be done uh, to do it in the interim between <coughs> town meetings. A more dangerous place to go would be if you didn't have a board of selectmen 
who wouldn't do what I think the expectation is on some people's part. That we're going to take the $900,000 that's in hand and get so far along on the project before next town meeting that you've got to vote. It's very possible. It isn't possible at all. I mean, it, it's, yeah, it's absolutely possible with the language, but and I don't think it's not going to get, understand that. Okay, it's not going to get driven in that direction, but I appreciate your input. May I ask a question? Is this public comment? Or? Susie's story. We're in the, we're in the public comment, yep. Okay. So if the townspeople had to have a vote, any decision would have to wait a year? Yeah. If there wasn't that language, anything that was going to happen would have to wait until next time, or whenever they decided to spend the money. Or use their funds. Or use the library funds, right, as, as Susie said. So, okay. Yeah, I have another issue. <laughs> <laughs> you have another issue, okay. Yes. Go ahead. Um, are we going to put the fire truck out to bid? Yes. I, I think it did go. Actually. We we have uh, and I was going to discuss that in my update. Okay. Um, but as far as fire truck wise, the five hundred eighty thousand dollars is a maximum, uh, not to go over. Um, we already have two. Uh, the committee um, that has been working on the truck already had two quotes. These are firemen that are on the committee. Yes. Already had two quotes. Um, as far as uh, tracks was, um, and one came in at 580, one came in at 665, and I don't feel that the prices are going to go down because the prices of the chassis and stuff, um, due to emissions, have all gone up in a percentage. Um, but in in a particular case, uh, these were not bids. You know, we we need to put out a spec to the manufacturers that build the fire trucks, um, that they're bidding on the same, like the same chassis or something that is similar to that, if they can't provide the particular chassis uh, that we might be looking for, or the pump, or you know the engine and things like that. Because if you have one person that is, uh, you know, they're gonna put a 500 horsepower engine in it versus a 525 horsepower engine, there's many thousands of dollars difference in that so we need to make sure it's fair um, for everyone that's bidding on the truck but no we're, we're not going against getting three bids uh, at least three bids for that particular <coughs> apparatus i think kind of tangentially to that i th i i'm going to propose that next year when we do the town report we include a copy of the cip mm -hmm. i mean i think part of the issue that was at mm -hmm. hand the other night was all right, we're going to get a fire truck this year, but it's, you know, I had the ball time for 2019, 20, 21. And I think if people knew what the process mm -hmm. forward was, they might feel more comfortable as to how we're budgeting. And maybe we could be a little more And that, that's something that, uh, you know, as far as when I was asked the question, is there anything else coming down the line? Well, obviously, you know, 10 years out there, from whatever, this year to 10 years, there is stuff that's coming down the line. I'm not comfortable without having that right in front of me saying, this is specifically it, because I'm going to be held to, you know, any mistake that I might say or, or anything well, like who that. Who would and question that? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and in fact, us. if I remember correctly, the fire department has apparatus that, that is 20 year life uh, the, the large apparatus you have smaller vehicles that 15. are 15 yeah. uh, and I think you got something that's 10 year life cycle yes. uh, and those are all laid out in the, in right. the schedule in, in yeah. the CIP report. everything is different uh, as far as and it's um, and are those life cycles um, anything to do with the fire code whatever the name and of it is yeah it? yes yeah. Um, most definitely. Uh, there, there is a town in Maine that was just on the news that they just stopped their fire department from responding uh, to calls because their gear is over 10 years old. Um, I didn't see the whole... Not their trucks. 
Oh, well, it might, be the, it might be the trucks also. I don't know the whole outcome or the whole story behind it. But they have just uh, made arrangements with uh, area departments around them to cover them until their gear gets updated. So like fire gear, um, anything over 10 years old uh, must be replaced, um, whether it looks brand new or, or and not. And this is, who, who this is the them? code we've opened that, yeah. NFPA standards. Um, that we follow uh, yeah. for, you know, for a lifetime now. Right, um, there's a code involved, but who's the code enforcement officer in that particular case? Who said you can't the go the insurance office? companies. That's the insurance companies, yeah. <laughs> well, basically, so if, if, something, if something happens, uh, any, any chief that doesn't follow the standards that are in place, you know, is taking a big, big risk. It's going to come down on him and the town in the long run if, if something happened. Um, so like every year uh, we have our gear that is you know listed out um, when it needs to be replaced. We know whose gear needs to be replaced. Um, you know the same with apparatus. Any equipment that uh, we do hose testing every year um, and all the different things to keep us in compliance uh, to make sure that if if something did happen you know that hose broke and struck someone in the head or something along that lines we could prove that it was tested or you know something bad happened to someone as far as like their scba um that went bad we can prove that we maintenance those every year we have them tested every year you have, and you have to test your ladders right your ladders if the ladder failed the Roast. first the first year that I came here and became, as far as chief wise, every when we had the ladders tested, every ladder failed the ladder testing besides one, um, where someone could actually drive a screwdriver through the things or or things like that, and we had the, we had them all replaced. <laughs> so it, so with, it, to you know make a long story a short story, part of the issue before us always especially with the fire department, it seems. It's this idea of want versus need. Right. And what you're describing to me is a, is a structure of need. And the, the wants seem to be someone other, other than that. I mean, right. we have, have things we have to have, yeah. not just things we I mean, the, have. The, the wants could get into, Bones. okay, you know, instead of a regular fire truck, you know, instead of a $580,000 fire truck, I want to go with, you know, Pierce Manufacturing, and it's going to be seven hundred thousand dollars for their basic fire truck, um, I or I want a ladder truck or something like that, cool. you know, which isn't there. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks. We're good. All right. Let's move along. Uh, first departmental update, Chief Thompson. Come on down. Yeah. <laughs> We're sort of in the middle of it already. Right? <laughs> <coughs> so, did, did he slip you a little money to start the conversation early? <laughs> no, it's, no, it's, it's tough starting in the middle of conversations uh, um, because it throws you off. If you have things that are written down, it's like, well, I already discussed that. I know, but I can't do that. What are you doing here? Exactly. No, that's no, right. it, and, it, it, and I would, I most definitely would rather um, answer any questions, then I leave and the questions are still out there. Um, it's good to have that answered in the beginning. Yep. And I, I, I was encouraged that we, we did have questions at town meeting about uh, some of these items that have been previously covered in a public forum, but not necessarily as large a forum. Uh, and uh, I'll just take this opportunity to uh, uh, plug CIP a little bit in that uh, the CIP committee does go through their process every year and uh, compiles their recommendations in a report. And that report is formally uh, presented to the budget committee, uh, the planning board, and the board of selectmen at uh, a, a public hearing, uh, usually in the month of uh, uh, December, um, and, the, and the written report is available in printed copies and as a PDF file on the town's website. 
in addition to that, and just to, before we get into, I um, have to say it before my mind clears that yeah. up. The other item that I think, if we're going to pay for a pavement survey, I think included in the town report, we're asking for, for instance, this year, two hundred sixty thousand dollars for paving. We should have some sort of description of what it is we're spending the money on, what we're spending on, what roads, what classes. Yeah. If we have this <coughs> paving survey done, we can refer to that, and right. it makes everything a little clearer. Exactly. And chief and CIP, you know, we we try to follow the CIP as close as possible as far as stuff that we put in. Um, but for example, the Suburban, the 2010 Suburban, and no fault of ours because we maintenance the, the vehicle you know, on a regular basis, we follow everything that uh, should be done to it. The engine went at 65,000 miles. Now, are we going to stay with our CIP plan to replace that vehicle after it's uh, um, got a new engine in it? We chose to put off for whatever amount of years knowing that it now has a new engine and as long as the body is in good shape we can continue with that. Um, that is all changes which CIP allows you to follow and is you know good for the town. <coughs> well a, a, a ten year plan when you look at the tenth year out in the future is going to be less certain than the coming year. Right. Uh, my view is that it's better to uh, to project uh, a possible need at a point in time and then as you get closer and evaluate it, recognize that it can be pushed off a year or two. It's much less disruptive to do that than to come up um, very close to when you need to expend the funds and say, oh, uh, yeah, we, gotta, we have to pull this forward by three or four years. Where did it come from? You know? Right. Chief, the CIP uh, program works, and I'll give an example. Two years ago, how much money was submitted by or CIP, say, to, for the radio system in the antennas? Uh, it was uh, roughly $180,000. And isn't it that the first meeting you came in and said, there's a grant for that, please take that off the books? So in my mind, the CIP works, and thank you. Uh, sometimes you don't get credit for the money you do save the town. All right. <coughs> so the department during the last two northeast snowstorms, we set the emergency management generator up at the school um, in case it was needed. Fortunately, it wasn't, um, and we left it there for uh, you know town meeting in case uh, the power was disrupted or something along that lines um, that we could just turn the power on there. Uh, the generator was moved from the Mirror Lake Station, which is normally used at the Mirror Lake Station if the power goes out, um, to the, the townhouse, just in case there was a, uh, uh, you know, another example of uh, you know, the power going out like it did last year, um, that you wouldn't be in the dark, they are counting votes and getting stuff uh, situated, but uh, there was not a large wind storm that was incorporated in this year, which was great. Just a lot of uh, a lot of snow. Uh, during the uh, this last northeast snowstorm, we responded to three medical calls, which the department ended up plowing into all three of the, uh, the patients uh, to get into their uh, actual driveway. And uh, unfortunately, all three were fairly long long driveways. Uh, one of them needed the four by four ambulance to actually get in the driveway, even after it was plowed. Um, and was transported by us to the, uh, the hospital. The department is working on getting final specs together uh, to put out for the, uh, to the fire apparatus companies uh, uh, for the replacement of MV2. And that was more covered uh, Sue's question, but I think we covered it a little bit more in depth, and if there's any further questions that you may have uh, in reference to that, I'll be more than glad to answer whenever I can. On February 9th, five members of the department attended uh, what's called the Stop the Bleed training, uh, train the trainer uh, class, and that was held at uh, our fire station. Adam Thompson, Heather Bozer, Skip Galvin, Sandy Lemieux, and uh, Kyle Williams went through a one-hour training held at the central station. 
class prepares the members that took the class to teach other groups, such as teachers, how to pack wounds and apply tourniquets to save lives uh, with serious bleeding. And when I say serious bleeding, it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, an active shooter or you know someone that's uh, causing some type of uh, large-scale incident. It could be the matter of you know someone was working at the school um, in maintenance-wise and get a serious cut, and as far as arterial-wise, and that they needed a, tier a, a tourniquet or uh, you know some type of packing of uh, of that injury until. Uh, further help could arrive. We are currently working with the Tufton Road School to try and get this uh, program to all the teachers. Tufton Road Firefighters Association purchased uh, the training kits to be able to hold further trainings uh, you know, throughout town. We have purchased the kits uh, that would be needed to supply each uh, classroom in the, mel in the elementary school um, one kit per uh, classroom. Uh, I'm not going to open up this kit because they're, uh, they're sealed, um, but it contains a tourniquet, it contains the uh, packing materials as far as uh, to stop a serious bleeding uh, wise, as far as to pack uh, a wound. Uh, if you had and does that have a coagulant in it? Yes, it does. Um, and uh, they do have a life expectancy, <coughs> but uh, they're, they're, they're quite some time as far as uh, several years as far as that goes. We felt that it would be a, uh, a good thing for our school to have uh, the, the different kits um, in place and to, for the teachers to have that training. And it not only would help them there, it help them in as far as uh, you know, their everyday life was. And it's a very simple thing. It's not meant to um, make them into EMTs or anything along that line. Yes, it's just meant to uh, you know help them if there is something serious that uh, that takes place. The uh, tabletop exercise uh, that was held on 228-18 in conjunction with Carroll County Coalition of Public Health went well. Jeff Jones oversaw that. He's the Coalition of Public Health uh, supervisor and. Uh, um, I think that overall we've got quite a bit out of it as far as uh, the people that were there. Um, and thank you as far as selecting wise, uh, our representative, representative that uh, showed up to, uh, to that. Well, it, was, uh, it was very informative. Uh, <coughs> certainly a little snapshot window into uh, the pretty extensive uh, planning that's required just to be available if we have a public health emergency that might come up. So. Yes. Um, also, as far as uh, over the past couple of months, I've been talking with a Doug Smithwood, um, who is working on a solar committee project. I have given him all the information he's looking for on a central station electric use. He is attempting to secure a grant to lower electric uh, electricity for the central station um, and uh, for low income people as far as that goes uh, in the area. Uh, I still think that there's many questions to be answered. Uh, one is the central station, uh, will it support solar panel arrays uh, on the roof uh, as far as the way it's uh, designed? Uh, does uh, the town support a large solar array in the field near the cemetery or a pavilion um, with a solar array on it uh, in the field for the central station? Um, and how would the power uh, be fed back to the central station? That's all questions that are out there um, and were asked as far as uh, of the gentleman. Uh, he apparently did have a meeting with co-op um, last, last Friday, last Friday yeah. and uh, they were looking into that. What his main um, <coughs> hope is that he can uh, reduce our delivery fee uh, as far as our uh, cost fee uh, that is roughly $347 to like $58. Um, but I think again that he's going to run into the problem that um, we have a 600 amp service. That service is driven by the sprinkler system that uh, we have in the building. That the startup on that sprinkler pump 
um, is over 500 amps at once. Yes, it's a one-time thing, um, but that's why the system is so big as far as that goes. And uh, I think that the co-op, that is the reason why we have that delivery uh, fee. If that can be switched, great. But uh, I think it's going to be tough. Um, and again, it would be up to the town whether or not that they want to see, you know, something like that happen in the, uh, you know, in the field and things like that. I have some further questions. The town needs to start uh, working on how it plans to proceed on 12-31-2018 with the ambulance trans transport contract. Um, <coughs> should we have a committee uh, that is looking into future contracts or um, how do you want to proceed? I think it needs to, be, needs to be visited before the next budget cycle gets put into place um, so that we're not all of a sudden going, uh, we need to rush into, into this. My, my opinion is th this whole thing needs to be well underway before we get to the budget season, if not completely com you know, completed. completed. And at the very least, by the time we get to budget season, I think we ought to have an RFP out there, uh, depending upon what we have in terms of a uh, response date on it. Uh, we don't want to wait until it's too late to include it in the, in the budget process. And in conjunction with that, we need to get um, busy reporting on the income stream. Yep. And, so and I don't want to... We, we have a certain amount of uh, people that have been billed, yep. but I don't want to unmature, you know, just say, yeah, this is what we've got coming in until... No, I think we need just to, uh, we need to establish a reporting system. Yep. So here is end of the first quarter, sometime in March. This is what we've got out billed. Yep. This is what we've collected. So we can get a feel for how much of this work we're going to do it ourselves. Right. And how much? Because that <coughs> part of the negotiations with whoever provides our ambulance service is going to be the fact that we have our own ambulance yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay. And I'll be able to give you a further, uh, better snapshot of what we actually uh, have built and um, what we couldn't build because of uh, you know it's over a year old and things like that before we could get the... the yeah, I'm not so place. concerned about, you know, uncollectible receivables yeah. as I am about the, the current usage, what we bill, how much mm -hmm. we're collecting, and maybe include in the report how many calls there were that stewards did. Okay. Because we can probably assume okay. about what they did. Sure. As far as cash flow. Okay. And maybe by the next time you come back? <coughs> uh, we should be able to. Um, I have uh, asked Diane to stop looking for electronic transfers um, into uh, the account uh, because some of the Medicare stuff is coming in directly as far as that goes. Yeah. Um, and I would think that that would also be Jack Woodmer that uh, sure. showed us that uh, that was coming in. Um, so we're just waiting to, to see how that whole process um, plays out. Uh, one thing that I didn't uh, put on this paperwork was that uh, um, Captain uh, Pike has been working with Google Maps in reference to uh, two different areas. One uh, was uh, Chase Point and Middle Chase Point. As far as they obviously don't connect, uh, he had a, a call that uh, um, had concerns because people come in, you know, they're, they're lost in there because Google Maps shows that they do connect, so they end up turning around. Um, he was able to find um, an area in Google Maps that allows you to make those corrections, and they do actually get back to you, and uh, they have uh, made some, uh, some changes. Same with uh, um, the Federal Corners and Willand not being a maintained through road. Um, they made those corrections on Google Maps. What about Canaan Road? Remember a couple of years ago, the buses 
Um, Good philosophy. That, that wasn't something that was told to us, right. so yeah. uh, hasn't yeah. nothing has been done yet to it, but uh, it could be. Yeah. Yeah. And, again, and another one that I know shows up on GPS uh, a lot is North Line Road. Yes. Uh, you know, the, uh, that should be a through road. It should be a through yeah, road. That's, uh, yeah, that's right. How do we get that done? Huh? Yeah, but at any rate, yeah. Uh, if, if you're if you're coming up 109 from Brookfield toward Tuftonboro, <coughs> right, yes, once you just keep going on North Line Road all the way through. Yeah, uh, yeah that's quite a quite a dolly. Uh, yeah. Yes, it is. So, well, great. <coughs> Any uh, questions? I just have a quick question. Who led the bleed training? I know they were going at Hawkins with a paramedic, not a paramedic. It, it was a. Williamson. It was a. Uh, <coughs> um, the leader of SARS, the bleed training, uh, came out of the southern area of the, of the state. Um, that works actually for a hospital. Um, a hospital. And I can I can get you her exact name as far as. What level training that. is that? <coughs> EMT or uh, she she taught uh, obviously there was paramedics, EMTAs, EMTs in the class as okay. far as so it was just through another through yep. a hospital. Yep, it was through a hospital. And I'll get you exact hospital and exact name so that you have that. And a representative from Huggins Hospital, Janet Williams, was at that training oh, to, to take the training training. Oh, it's a okay. I'd like to read the following, Chief. A note of thanks to our fire chief and his staff for having the backup generators available for the voting polls of the town meeting. To follow up on that note, I would like to ask the board if I could follow up on the possible options of getting backup generation power to some of our town buildings. I would like to work in conjunction with our fire chief. I would also like to investigate if there are any grants available. Great. Yeah, I think the, the especially a townhouse, because I think it's important that we don't have a blowout when there's voting. Yeah, right. You know, uh, we made it through the last two years with various amounts of snow. And again, thank you to your staff for getting uh, making those efforts. If you want, to give that copy right to uh, our camera. Uh, the only question I have for you is on the on the stop the bleed yes. packets and that sort of thing. Uh, is this something that the police department already has? As far as training was? And 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 the and, and the stuff in their cruisers because um, th this strikes me as this is an immediate response kind of thing. So if for instance uh, one of the police officers goes off uh, goes out on a call and there's somebody that's that has a severe bleeding incident, uh, the idea is you want to address it now, not 10 minutes from now or whatever when the ambulance gets there because they might bleed out in the meantime, right? So right. this is something you guys already have? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Great. Well, we use a different tourniquet, but yes. And, <laughs> and I think that uh, um, I could be wrong, but it's mostly for if an officer has an issue um, that it's there for themselves or someone to use on them if there was, because uh, they carry it on them themselves. Yeah. Hey, yeah, well, though they have used, we have it, but others yeah, have can, used can it. I, can I ask the two of you to compare notes here? Yeah. And if this is, if, if this for what it does uh, is different than what you have and it makes sense for your officers to carry this for, you know, members of the public that they come up against and it, it, uh, we do have kits so we carry on our belts so the mine ripped are getting, getting and we have to replace them. We actually did this probably about like two years ago. Uh, we carry quick clot, the, the hemostatic gauze, and we carry uh, SWAT T tourniquets, which are, can also be used as a pressure dressing. Um, and I know at least one officer has his own uh, uh, cat tourniquet too. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the thing is, uh, with the with the different, <coughs> believe it or not, um, there are fake ones. 
Uh, <coughs> over this? Yeah, as far as starter kit wise. Um, and when I say fake, um, they're built much more cheaply. Um, you can get them. They, they look the same, but yes. they don't work the same. Handles yes. break. So yeah, the know, handles just snap breaks. off once you started turning them. Um, so it's a difference between a packet that's ten dollars and a packet that's like forty dollars. Moving on, but uh, um, so we just have to make sure that people are careful that they don't get the, the you know, the considered fake ones that are out there because they'll fail in the process. Um, but I know with, with like Narcan, our police department went through the complete training as far as getting certified with. Uh, um, being able to give Narcan to the general public. Other departments went through training basically to give to each other uh, as far as uh, their, their own protection as far as it goes. So I didn't know if there was a difference between what you carried as far as uh, you know the uh, tourniquet um, for your own use. Um, or you know the everyday type of thing. That's no, it, it'd be suitable for anybody. Yeah. And like I said, it, the the SWAT T. What's nice about it is it can be used as a pressure pressing too. Yes. Um, it's not very practical to put on ahead of time. But. Yeah, any other questions for Chief Thompson? Chief, thank you very thank much. You. Have a good week. Bye, Chief. Thanks, Corey. You're right. today. Yes, the <laughs> Spring? Um, it's spring shorts now. Summer whites. <laughs> um, no. Well, the past asked for that. So the, the, the bottom two are, don't really mean a whole lot. That's the top one. It shows what the categories of the offenses are. You can see you've had more. Put this, we'll see you. Thank you, sir. More cases. When you look down our, at the chart, we have three felonies versus zero to date last year, we have three this year. We have 22 offenses versus 11. Although when it kicks up here, it says 24. But oh, that's offense report. So some of them might have more than one case, uh, offense attached to them. Um, so we've been busier with offenses and obviously less with motor vehicle stops. And on top of that, we've had some people who've had to take, take a time off or been sick. So we're still, but we've been busier with those. Uh, but the, if you look at the bottom, uh, two things where it's a suspected of using, uh, basically it's uh, uh, talks about the, it's whether or not alcohol was involved, that's all. Okay. Um, so yes, we already have the, uh, the gunshot trauma kit, if you will. It's a, it's a hemostatic dressing to pack the wounds, and then you have tourniquets. Basically, if, you, if it's in a place where you can use a tourniquet, you'd use a tourniquet and you pack the wound with the hemostatic otherwise. I do have a meeting coming up with the next week with um, Verizon to see about what we can do about it. He believes that we can do something with our Verizon bill, maybe save some money on that. Uh, we've got uh, I had a couple of memos from Lloyd um, asking about the computers. I uh, talked to Tom, but he was going on vacation, so I've got to coordinate with Tom on the new server. He's back. Yes. And I also have to coordinate with IMC to make sure we're all up to speed. We did have a meeting with um, IMC, Sheriff's Department, and other agencies and dialing in to see where the different levels of projects are. So working on that. One of the things that was not, we went to a meeting with IMC last was it June? And they talked about this cross agency. Uh, cross agency. It's IMC is, is is our record system. Okay. <coughs> it's actually changed names two or three times, but it's our records management system. So uh, we had uh, there's talk about being able to cross agency. So in other words, we can check with 
if we had an issue with, with a name come up, we could check with other departments. Right now, we can only check with Carroll County and us. Our records are, are shared. But uh, when we went to the meeting last June, they said, well, if the Sheriff's Department sends, spends like $1,500, you'll get it too. We'll find out afterwards, no, you don't get it too. You have to pay that also. Everybody wants that access. To, but we'll see. Maybe later in the year, we'll look at that. What's the timing date for full operation of your computer system, server, etc.? That is something I have to talk with Tom. I, I hope to next month get, get it done. So within 30 days, is that uh, a good representation? I'd like by the end of April, yes. Is there anything we can do? Uh, no, it's just a matter of me getting with Tom and our schedule's working. Cause he took a week off and yeah. he was busy with some other projects at one point. Um, you know, that's and I've, I've taken some stuff off my computer and put it onto a hard drive, an external hard drive, and so that has helped with some of the because it was getting full of videos from our video system, so it's taken off so well. Um, I want us to be as helpful as we can. That's yeah. a key part of police work, is your records. Yeah. Um, you also said the thing about the Bay Road incident. I can't say anything about that because it's uh, yeah. under investigation still. It hasn't been, uh, let's see what comes of that. Okay. Um, And then you asked about the weekly summaries. I, I, was, I haven't done them. Uh, it's easy when the, when the sheriff's department sends me a weekly log. It's easy when the sheriff's department doesn't send me a weekly log. It causes me to it takes more time. So I haven't done those. But I uh, will look at working on that. When you're talking about activity, um, I was asked by a citizen, was there an indictment uh, recently? Involving Tufton Borough for aggravated assault. I'd be yes, glad, I'd be glad to yes. speak to you privately. Yes, I don't want to. I don't want to violate assault. anybody's rights here. No, no, that was not. <coughs> yes, there was an indictment recently for aggravated assault for incident that happened down in uh, Mountain Shadows. So, um, I'm sorry. So that that is pending arraignment. Uh, Last I knew, I believe uh, he didn't show up with the first arraignment, so they rescheduled it. Um, and now they're typically, if somebody's out, hasn't been arrested, they just send them a notice. This is your day to show up for arraignment once they feel there's a risk to the community. Then we arrest them and hold them. So, yes, there was that indictment. Uh, Could I ask a question here? Mm -hmm. And I'll preface it by I realize you're busy and small department and you do excellent work but I will defer to what the other two selectmen we receive on a weekly basis welfare cases um, interrogatories from lawyers in your experience is there any way for you to brief us on some of these cases um, I will defer to uh, my colleagues as to how we do that I know, what would be the benefit of the information from our standpoint, I guess? That would be my question. The same reason why I like to know where, what driveways are being put in, uh, what welfare cases. Uh, people do a nice job, but I take my job real serious here. But I'll defer to your judgment. Um, I, I guess I, I would say that we are engaged with welfare cases as we should be, okay, because we have a, uh, a welfare uh, obligation under the law. We're the welfare agents. Hmm? We're the wel welfare agents. Yeah, so. that's right. And uh, um, driveway permits on the town roads, um, uh, it, it's certainly something that uh, uh, affects the. Uh, the the maintenance of the roads and, uh, and their minds is something that it's important uh, that we're aware of. Uh, I, I'm, I, it's not clear to me what you're looking for here from uh, Chief Shigori um, that, that fits within um, 
you know, what, what we've got to stay on top of. Um, so, uh, I mean, we, we all like to know what's going on in town. You know, no question about that. Um, and uh, uh, I think a lot of what goes on in police work um, as it relates to interaction with folks has a level of confidentiality associated with it. Uh, it's my hope that uh, that always um, the, um, the <coughs> those situations are considered in, in a balanced um, manner so that information that can be available to people to inform them about what's going on in town is made available. Uh, and if, for instance, uh, there's a uh, uh, awareness by neighbors of uh, force involvement at this neighbor's house, there's at least uh, that, that we can uh, acknowledge publicly that that uh, to the extent that it doesn't invade privacy, that, that something is going on. Because uh, um, at any time, those sorts of things are totally shut down in terms of information available to folks uh, that tend to, <coughs> tends to foster a, well, you know, it's, uh, uh, everything's a deep, dark secret. The, the uh, incident on Bay Road was a gas leak. There was a, a thought that someone had tampered with some propane tanks outside the house. Yeah. Obviously, it's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking into that. The cases uh, work at the county attorney's office to see what what can be done. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's where that's, that's at. These uh, and you've listed your arrests, and that's I mean that's sort of cuts of due process that we have here in this country. But I mean, once a person's arrested, it's public. It's public uh, information. It's and minor. We actually put a they actually passed a law a few years ago mandating that certain information yeah. be public about yeah. arrests, which I thought was unfortunate in some ways. I understand it because some places were saying absolutely nothing, yeah. but on the other hand, what they, they kind of went back anyway. Well, a lot of times what laws that get enacted and regulations get changed are uh, done to address uh, a, an extreme situation, but it affects everybody. So it's it's the, ex the extreme guy that, that forces every everybody else to do things a little bit differently. Uh, but. But I would certainly hope that uh, that we can always make as much information as possible uh, available, uh, and and again, not not looking to to um, uh, to disrespect privacy or uh, or anything like that. But if there's something that goes on that's visible to the public, uh, then at least we need to to speak to the fact that that something went on, uh, and if. Uh, uh, it, it's not appropriate to to get into uh, investigative matters. Certainly, that's uh, that makes sense. With the with the, the like the incident talking about the aggravated assault, um, when it goes up to the county attorney's office and indictment, I can't say anything because grand right. jury stuff is not sealed. Right. Sealed, and then the problem is it's in. I don't know if an arrest is made or if they've called, because that's a KPS is handled by the sheriff's department. And I wouldn't know necessarily so about the arraignment. Uh, I'm not, in this case, they didn't notify me. It's so like you somebody, weren't up involved in the incident at all? Oh, no, we did the incident. We sent it so up. So they need to inform you if they come back with an, an arrest warrant from the grand jury? Yeah, and I think we got one coming up that I believe we will be notified on. Well, you may call the sheriff and tell him that he needs to notify you. Yeah, it, but in this particular case of the aggravated assault, they mailed a notice saying show up for arraignment. I don't know when that is because I'm not a party. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the sh county attorney's office and the defense are the parties to that. And, you know, if they work out something, I may just be asked, you know, are you okay with this? You know, that's kind of a thing. So that's where, that's where that particular case is at, is they're uh, negotiating, I think, as to where that goes. I got a couple, and not to avoid the issue. No, no, you will you, you you we'll probably come sure. back to it at some point in time. Let's think about it. On your, on your statistics, mm -hmm. is 
this sheet year to date? Is that what I'm looking Yes, year to date. It says right activity from January 1 to end of February. This does. I don't see that this does. So at any rate, am I missing it? Oh, okay, there it is. Thanks. Okay. So from January 1 to the end of February, let's say 60 days. And I appreciate all the good work you did before I I'll preface it by saying I think you're a wonderful police chief. You've had five traffic stops. Yes. That's one every 10 days. It's not very good. It is not good at all. Mm -hmm. On the uh, offenses IBR statistics, the same period of time, 60 days, you've got two incidences of traffic offense, I think, mm -hmm. of traffic by law offenses. And I'm so adding one. To one there, but I'm adding to that the driving while intoxicated, uh, which may be the same one. No. I don't know. No, so let's say you have two. After. Let's say you have two. That's, you know, we're not. I appreciate the interest in aggravated assaults and all of the other major crimes in the world, but our primary concern has to remain highways and safety. Then I think we need to kick that into gear a little bit more. I happen to live on Ledge Hill Road, which is a high traffic area with high speeds. And I'm not saying you need to patrol my street. I'm okay. saying that if it goes on there, it goes on everywhere. And I, I can tell you two of the cases listed here have taken a lot of time. Mm -hmm. uh, the rape case has been a lot of time on that. And the pornography I've seen material cases take, we've done a, a number of search warrants. <laughs> so, does on that, that. so does that take an officer out of patrol to do that? Yes. So you're not divesting the patrol officer of the investigation and staying with them? We it. typically handle our own cases. Okay. Unless so we need some help. Unless we need some help, then we, that's how we do it. You may want to look at that procedure yeah. just a little bit, because your traffic numbers are... Well, typically we only have one person on as part of the problem. But like with the rape case, I, I took over part of it. Yeah. Um, the uh, the so machine material case, uh, that was... And, and, it, and we've done probably... I want to say three or four search warrants on that already. Uh, for and this uh, the rape case, in fact, you just it's yeah. We we've had to do a number of uh, contact a number of different agencies in a number of states to get records, and uh, where that took a lot of time because I don't know the numbers to call for all these agencies and state X. So we have, oh we know the numbers to call, but then we have to try and match up. And it's been, yeah, the officers spent a lot of time on faxing, sending, you know. Well, and maybe another conversation <coughs> have with the uh, high sheriff of charge that these bigger cases, maybe we need some of their assistance in the investigations. Hmm. Just a thought. I'm not saying it would work or I'm not recommending anything. I'm just thinking out loud that we need to spend a little more time on patrol because I'm not happy with the numbers, and I'm a nice guy. The people who aren't nice guys are really not not happy with the numbers. So we need to take a look at this. I think the, the, the right. number that shows is that we've had 22 incidents involving crimes versus 11 during the same time last yeah, year. Yeah, no, I'm not saying crime is That's, safe. And then we've had we had an incident out on the lake, which has taken a lot of number of people we've had to interview and re-interview. Yeah. So it's. Uh, I echo what my brother Sorkman is saying. I, of all people, understand the uh, situation you're in with limited resources. That being said, when I started this conversation, you know, there's a couple of cases that come to mind. We just, the Attorney General just complimented you on putting two people away who actually. I won't use the word murdered, but caused a death in this town two years ago. So I'm trying to be balanced here, like, like, like he is. And you know what? You're sitting here listening and, uh, and being a good listener, so thank you. Did you have another item you wanted to bring up? No. I did. <clears throat> Just in case you were short. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. To continue uh, 
there continue to be trailers and bob houses left at the town beach and in the parking lot. I guess you've been busy, right? <laughs> and there's one at the end of Lake Street I was asked about. Okay, I'll okay. check on this. Okay, here again. Uh, I'm just passing on information. All right. Bottom thank line you. is thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you Chief. Have a nice trip. You look great. Thanks. Okay. Next up is review and approval of minutes. Just have the March just, just have the ones from uh, Tuesday, March 13th. I thought they were well done. I'll make a motion to approve. I see circle the 24th. Yeah, that's that's a uh, that was a correction that I'd made after I forwarded the draft one, so okay. I want to make sure that we'll get her. Did you move to move? I did. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Motion passes. All right. Let's move on did, to. Did we have some other non public that you were working uh, on? We, we we do have non-public for uh, performance evaluation yes. that we will yep. uh, I know you were going to session after uh, nice. after the close of the nice job by the way. Thank you. All right. Um, Sydney, I don't see a signature folder today. There so, is something in there though. Uh, let's see what we have. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, all right. So. In here we have the septic system. Uh, I, I don't, uh, it would be my preference that we wait to deal with this until Jack is back from his vacation. Uh, I had a brief conversation with him on, I think it was Thursday, that the library's architect had expressed some concern about exactly where the, the septic tank was and before we launch into doing the construction, I want everybody to be on the same page. Sure. If it needs to be moved a little bit, it'll get moved a little bit, and then we won't, at some point in the future, be gnashing our teeth because we didn't we didn't get it quite where it would uh, would work best for everybody. So uh, I want us to get this thing done as soon as we can. Yes. Um, but it's more important to get it done right than it is to. Uh, launch into it immediately and then uh, uh, later discover that we've uh, short circuited the process. Who do we have to the design on that? Bollinger. <coughs> Pardon me? Chip Bollinger. Is that so the Bollinger? Yeah, okay. We don't go through that. I'm sorry? Uh, hopefully, we don't have to pay anything for the right. septic tank. Oh, no, I'm sorry, it might have been Folsom. I think Folsom is Folsom in the design. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, but I agree. Hopefully, there won't be yeah. uh, design charge, a uh, design change charge. Uh, right. Selectman's update. Chip? I've gone through most of what I had as we went through the meeting. One, the CIP needs to be in the town report. Two, the dating needs to be in the town report. The uh, fire. I'm sorry, what was the second thing you said? Paving. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. We're doing the paving. Um, the other thing we need to do is have a work session because I think we need to treat last Wednesday as a learning experience as opposed to a day at the stocks. Correct. I think the downfall was, in my case, was the assumption that all processes were um, fully up to speed. They weren't. Um, I think we need to include a calendar, which we have on the wall there, in each file for each Warren article as we go forward next year and have a timetable and have a particular list so that we know that we're checking off all the boxes going going down the line. And if there's if there's need needed training on the part of our staff, which there could well very well be, we need to make sure we provide them with that training as well. Because I think 
I honestly don't think anyone went into the Tuesday or Wednesday or the Friday pre previous to that feeling that they hadn't done everything they needed to do. And all of a sudden it became very obvious that they hadn't. And I think we need to treat that, as I said, like, as a learning experience and sure. figure out how to put the processes in place. And I think it's important that we cross train. Another issue was you brought the recording of the, of the votes, the tallying of the votes online. It's a cross training issue. Mm -hmm. um, or we can absolutely stipulate no vacations during town meeting. We, we can do that. <laughs> but uh, short of that, I think we need to. There's a, a number of things we need to pick up on. Sure. I, I yep. think it was a. It was hard to go through, but I think it's actually beneficial. It's sort of. Yes. Well. We blew it. So let's learn from our mistake yeah. and make sure that uh, that that doesn't occur again. And we're going to have a new selectman someday. I mean, we'll get reelected, but yeah. we're not going to live forever, and we're probably not going to run forever. So well, we and to, you know, in the state of my memory, it's entirely possible. That <laughs> some of the stuff that I remember now, I, I, I I'll miss going forward. So there's no reason that we can't have a robust system in place to help us deal with this stuff. Um, Alyssa. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Um, I noticed there were questions of how did this happen or when did this happen or we need a comprehensive plan when there is a comprehensive plan or um, you know requests for information that we're all familiar with. Um, I'm wondering if you could do an overhead, for instance, of CIP plan. Someone asks about something, you just scroll up to it, and there is the information. So. Some people say like like, they, like have yeah. the have the CIP page yeah all ready to go yeah, yeah so it's so, like or you have each Warren article people can look at it you could even type in the amendments <laughs> yeah. someone could be doing that just so that everyone's <coughs> communicating because some people seem to get on edge when they feel that information isn't being shared or they didn't know when in fact it is. It has been public, it has been transparent, they just don't know it, they weren't aware of it. But if, so if you had it there, it's not just the select limits, you have all these committees working, and that right. information is there. Yeah, I don't know how, I mean, I sort of like Bill's comments before our meeting today, where the Holderness town meeting took 22 minutes. 22 minutes, and and that was long this year. And I think the more you try to dissect, so and there, and maybe there are know. some things that they do in their process that are a little bit different than ours, but um, and they have a reasonable turnout for town meeting, um, but uh, folks are the people that come to town meeting are um, feel that they're fully informed in advance and that these. It, they can deal with these things in a, uh, in, in a straightforward manner. So, and, I, and I'm not saying that 22 minutes is where we need to be. Uh, <laughs> but certainly from some of the questions that we had at the meeting uh, on information that was available, uh, it's, uh, it's a frustration that, um, you know, that, that this stuff is there, but, it's, but, but we're not doing as good a job connecting with folks. And we see this with budget hearings. We see that it with other public hearings and, and meetings. As we do get few people to come out, uh, and the generally it's the same handful of people, maybe a few more that that are always engaged and interested. And uh, so, so how do we expand that group? And and the other thing is the earlier in the process that people are informed and can raise. Um, concerns, issues, ideas, the, 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 the greater the impact they can have on the process. Uh, when, when a question comes up, once we're at the, at the voting stage on uh, uh, whether it's on the, you know, in, in, in the budget committee process or uh, at town meeting, um, there are a limited um, number of things that you can do in that forum to 
uh, to address the concerns, uh, particularly if it's something that that uh, takes some time and research and uh, and review to uh, to deal with. Yes, sir. I, I would just like to say that it's really hard to be a member of the public who's on the other side to get questions answered when dialogue is shut off at all the meetings you go to. You go to the budget committee, you have to wait till the very end to ask your question. Everything's, you know, and then it's, then it's like restarting a particular subject and everybody wants to go home. Same thing here, you know, we get two opportunities at the beginning at the end, to, you know, right now I'm like, you know, thank you so much for letting me speak out of the time well, slot. It but should be collegial. It should be collegial. There should be give and take. When the fire department was here was when I should have asked mm -hmm. my question, was when he was sitting at the table, you know. Um, there it would ways work much better if that collegial dialogue was available. There's okay. ways to do it, and unfortunately there are members of the community that abuse the system, and that it's gone too far the other way, I think. I think but there's a I lot think, of anger. Yeah, and for over what? I mean, it, it's a, you got nothing better to do than be angry, as far as I'm concerned, because the town isn't going bankrupt, it isn't misspending money, it's just maybe not informing people enough. But I think you're correct in that there's ways to be collegial about the fire chief, for instance, and asking questions during the meeting. There's maybe more opportunity for us to not just live by the statute, but be more informative. Have two budget hearings, have three, I don't care or have more than more open dialogue during the budget process or more open dialogue during any number of these meetings that we have. But I think it's it's been <laughs> kind of like our evening meetings. There's a point at which you just have to say, no, I'm not doing that anymore. And I'll, Max will do as bad about it as anybody. Joe's been bad about it, of abusing the system to make some sort of personal comment about the players. I don't mind talking about the issues all day long. I don't mind having dialogue about the issues all day long. I'm not interested in talking about the players. I really do not. So when there's a call for resignation or a, you guys are breaking the law or some sort of personal attack, I'm not interested. I'm not at all interested. I'm in it for the money. You know, <laughs> but I'm not interested in personal attacks. Well, there are a couple more, I think, opportunities for putting out information to the public. Um, I know when I'm writing my articles, I, I was paying attention to the decisions you made that pertain to warrant articles, maybe Sodom Road or the septic system, because those were coming up. Um, and hopefully people are follow me and will ask a question if they don't understand. Um, but Wolfboro uses Wolfboro TV. You're now effectively using YouTube, which is just a wonderful source of communication and a good reference. And now Wolfboro had 35 Warren articles, but they go into the studio and then they record and, you've, and people speak to each one and there are um, pieces written up if Dave Ford has uh, a road. Uh, but is there a dialogue with the... Okay. No, this is a presentation. This is later than I think what Sue's talking about. But so if you have roads, he has a list of which roads are being done. It's right up there. It's all in the schedule. It's all in an Excel sheet. So anyway, that is made available. So someone can go back and look at that YouTube and if you're really interested in roads, you can study what that <coughs> road schedule is because so, they have so much infrastructure stuff. Well, it, with respect to the roads, my recollection is that generally the roads that we're planning to pave are identified as part of the conversation at town meeting. This year, mm -hmm. uh, it's sort of up in the, up, up in the air. 
uh, and we had agreed that in the spring we're going to take a we're going to take a look at the condition of some of these roads that uh, uh, and roads that are in the mix. Uh, so, so in that case, excuse me for interrupting, but you might say, here's our road, our road budget, and we have a paving study, and this is what we expect the paving study. Well, to the, the paving do. study isn't going so to give us. So people know that it's happening. Paving else. study's not going to give us information for this year because it's going to be done this year. The, the roads that we're going to have to pave this year uh, are, are really going to be the result of a, 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 Right, so a, what, a, what I'm saying is if that's not what you have, you all are in charge of marketing your information. And what you have is you're going to have a paving study. And, you know, yeah, and we explained that, but I mean, part of the marketing of your information is to have your sales force on hand. We didn't have the road agent there at a town meeting. So, well, he could be in the YouTube. <laughs> well, no, I mean, you're talking about apples and oranges to a certain degree. Because that's my last point. I'll stop talking. But I've heard a lot of talk back and forth out in the community about going SB2. I think that would be the worst thing in the world for Tufton Road to do. But that's what Wolfboro does. So the only opportunity you really have mm -hmm. are the hearings or YouTube or the television. I mean, our opportunity remains That's right. town That's meeting. That's right, they have to do it, yeah. Right. Our opportunity remains town meeting, and I think it's important that we... And lastly, I mean, to the meeting, there hasn't been allowed to be a dialogue. When you ask a question, we couldn't have this same interchange vis-a-vis -vis the Warren article on the Library Reserve Fund at town meeting, because it, I was informed a couple of times by our moderator to, in, to talk to him. When I answer or make a statement, I'm, I'm making it through the moderator. Yes. I'm not certain that particular structure works in this age as much as well, those are the rules, rules of the town meeting, unless the body yeah. changes. Yeah, I just think it's more difficult for us to have you ask a question, I answer the question. It doesn't answer completely in your mind, but now but now own, I have to. You've had your shot. Somebody yeah. else go. Yeah. And I, I think well, that goes the to your point of acoustics, the microphones, all of that also further complicates. Yeah, but I think it goes to your point of collegiality. I mean, it's it's harder to get to the bottom of the issue if you're not allowed more than one question. But at any rate, I think I appreciate you, the problem. I agree with you. There is an issue. But it, it's there at budget meetings. It's it's there at the budget hearing. It's hard for people who aren't happy with something to speak up. It's hard because you're facing, you know, decisions that have already been made and, you know, well considered, blah, blah, blah. So it, I think sometimes that factor gets lost in them. I want to speak. So it, it's, it, it's, uh, Part of what it comes back to is um, that in those forums we have what I would refer to as grandstanders in addition to people that are that are actually um, trying to have a positive influence on the result. Uh, so when we have individuals that stand up at a budget committee hearing uh, meeting and rail against an individual that's on the budget committee. Yeah, that's completely inappropriate. It, it is, and but but one of the things that one of the effects that that has is it adjusts the behavior of everybody else that's in there because you you have to in order to have the business of the the meeting take place, you have to work toward the worst common denominator, if you will, in terms of input that you're getting from folks that are at the meeting. And I, I, so, it, it isn't, it's not an open, it's, it's not an easy answer. No, it uh, isn't, because once a person, you know, is a troublemaker, then everybody assumes they're a troublemaker and automatically votes the other way. Or doesn't listen. Or doesn't listen. Yeah, right. And I mean, um, we've had we've had incidents. I've had I've been confronted by people before meetings even start saying, 
Now, don't you cause trouble tonight. We're all friends here. I'm like, okay. Um, and th th there was a worse incident of it this year. It didn't involve me, but. And the. Well, it's it's people, something you. Uh, <laughs> if people will stay with the topic, stay with the issue, they can get as loud and crazy as they want as long as they're on point with the issue. That's, I don't know. But I think we need to lead by example. I think you're right that today's meeting, in my mind, worked better than some of the first meetings that I was coming to here last year. And it's because allowing input from one way or another. Because the, we're having right now. Yeah. I, there, think it's, it's I don't right. want I don't want there to be five or six or seven selectmen. I don't think that's appropriate. But I think getting as much input as we can, I we can't think of everything, obviously, we're not smart enough. Right. All right. Boy, sorry, we're, we're up to you on update. <laughs> I recently had a conversation with an Ernest Hayford, who was a longtime janitor for the school district. He's been a custodian for the town of Ossipi, town offices, and other public buildings. Since we're having trouble getting someone to do the serious cleaning here, would it be appropriate for me to have him contact Jack to clean the, this, this building and the... The lady that does this building, Dolly, Dolly, Dolly. does not do the pipe or the townhouse. To my knowledge. She does. She does. She does. Yeah. We're talking about reaching up behind here, uh, the lights and, and, and whatnot. Remember we put money aside yeah, exactly. a year ago? I was trying to see how it was bifurcated. Mm -hmm. no. All right. So this is the deep cleaning that you were yeah. talking about. That yes. Yeah, that's <laughs> something that, <laughs> that, 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 that Dolly I think was I'm not really capable really of doing. Or, 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 uh, no, it's not a slam at her. Yeah, I mean, Jack's had an opportunity to put it out on the street. We haven't gotten anybody. Well, so if you found somebody, I certainly you know, would hope you'd come down. The, the company that gave him the estimate, mm -hmm. I've knocked on their door and have left messages, and I still haven't gotten back to them. Yeah. So they obviously aren't interested. <clears throat> I had another thing. Did you see my correspondence about the road agent bills? Yeah. It's in there? Yeah. And I, and I attached one to the checks. Right. Uh, let me read. We have a number <coughs> stated 39 for 3718. Put plow frame back on FL80 and plows on both town trucks, town labor, eight and a half hours for 323. And then I see an invoice for the day before 38 for 37218. Put plows back on both town trucks and uh, plow frame on. Uh, FL80. So this is a question for the road, the road agent? agent? That's right. I said, is there a possibility that these items have been duplicated? And did you did you ask him that question? Um, no response. Okay. I think he's on vacation. <laughs> I've already stated I'm really maybe thinking we should say no vacations during town meeting. Just saying. Well, <laughs> you see how valuable you are. Well, obviously, if there's, if there's road agents on vacation, I, I don't know. I, I don't know either, either, but it, yeah. there's no response to my phone calls. Yeah. Okay. And I just assume it's a type of. It looks like you're doing that. All right. Well, I just have one item that I want to touch today, and that is uh, yeah, uh, one of the articles that was approved at town meeting was the, the uh, sale of tax needed properties. So I think we need to get started on that process quickly. Uh, it's going to take, I, I know from experience it will take a while to get the whole thing going. And I don't know if, if getting started on it is putting a, uh, an RFP out uh, and seeing what kind of responses that we get from uh, uh, whoever might be out there. Uh, but uh, now is the time for us to start the process and not uh, 
uh, further in the in the future. And so you have. Uh, I just want to say that a year or so ago, someone hired me to do research down in New Durham for their uh, property sale, and they do it by um, silent bidding. They have a clipboard for each property. And people come in and write their name and their bid. And it's open for like two weeks of regular business hours. People so they have a silent auction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the bid keeps going up. Yeah. yeah. So people can see what the bid is at and, and, and up the ante if they want. So I think that um, might be worth getting in touch with Isn't some of these other towns and see what they do. Yeah. See how they Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I don't know, and obviously I haven't talked to any and that, professionals. That's sort of a compromise. Right, I haven't talked to any professionals, so I'm just talking off the top of my head. I don't know why you can't commingle these things. I, mean, exactly. I don't know why you can have a sealed bid and a live auction and perhaps a, 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 an ongoing auction. Any number of things. I mean, our job is to get the most we can. Obviously, there were some on two, Wednesday night who thought our only job was to get it back on the tax rolls, but it isn't our only job. So we yeah. also need to make sure it's appropriate to sell it. Mm -hmm. Right, we need to go through the list again. Yeah. Figure that out because some of it we need to not sell. Do you want to put that on the agenda for the next meeting or sure. work session or how would you like to handle it? I'd suggest a, if we could do that and some sort of codification, if you will, of our processes vis-a-vis -vis, um, Warren articles. At a work session, I think that might be yep. time well spent. Yep. And when would you guys like? You want to have a work session this week? Uh, I can on Friday. Can okay. I can go to Portland. Okay. Um, I can well, uh, we could. How about uh, uh, the following Friday? Yeah, yeah. Good after the thirtieth. Do we have a meeting on the twenty-sixth, or is it? No, we don't. <laughs> Do you want to have it Monday? Uh, have a meeting Monday? Uh, I would rather do a work session on a Friday than, than Monday. I'd rather do it on the 30th. Okay, 30th is fine with me. All right. We can do it at 8.30. Okay. Sure. That would be good. Yep. Is 8.30 convenient for you, Karen? Yes, thank you. Or are you in Florida, Karen? I wish, but no. Yep. Just that. Uh, uh, I got right. another thing under update. Yep. I know. Hit it on a separate paper. Karen, as I understand it, the printer had to be switched out, and this is uh, the one that there was a problem with, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. I've tried using it five or six times, and it keeps saying something about the cartridge. Should this be replaced or rebuilt, or what? Did, or do you want to ch check it out and get back to us? You're our computer guru. This one actually is. That's the one that uh, one of. You know how we did a proposal. I did, the, they did that comparison thing for the copier and the printer. It was to have that one replaced. Um, when that one did no longer get double sided for us, we took the one that was in here. So, to answer your question, the proposal's already been done. I was waiting for town meeting to pass. Um, so, that's on its way out and something else yeah. is coming in. And there's, and black, there's, and there's black money black. in the budget, right? Now, yeah, I just um, wanted to make sure yeah. everything got passed at town meeting before we proceeded. Yeah. Right. Uh, the other okay. thing as far as updates, we're past town meeting now, and it's when the uh, pay raises get issued retroactively. And, and, and Diane is working on that paperwork. And we have no issues there as far as I'm concerned. Uh, well, we haven't been provided with the uh, performance reviews. We've done our part. You know? um, I'm not certain what the chiefs have done their part as far as enlightening us about performance reviews. Yeah. So that has to happen at some point. Okay. Right. And I, part of it is any that I'm done. I'm not, I hope they are done. I know Diane's working on the payroll. Right. Yeah. She's also. working on the, on, the, on the authorization for the increases. Uh, and uh, we do need to review those uh, evaluations on the, right. on the individual. I know Clay has his points. Yeah. I know they were caught up through the end of last year because I remember we went through that whole yeah. thing. Yes. And then, of course, it's probably been some anniversaries now, January, February, perhaps, March. Yeah. But they were caught up. So, do we, do we use the ones that were submitted by December 31st? Are those 
go and do you want to review? Yeah, whether well, it's yeah. going to impact this, this particular yep. pay that we're working yeah, on. Because those were all done on their anniversary date. And they've been in the right. 72 rounds. That's right. right. So yeah. you, you'll have those available? Yeah, would you like to re review them? I mean, yep. yeah, after yep. you, I put them away. Yeah, okay. 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 All right. And I guess Diane's going to work on whether or not we have to have new was it a W9 because of the tax changes. Right. Oh, yeah. She's yeah. It's a work in progress. Uh, yeah. W4s. Yeah. W4. Okay. And was there a welfare case in the last week? There was. And did you review it? I did. Okay. Uh, well, I got a call on it. Uh, she did it. I said, make it happen. So. There's another one after that. Okay. And we may get accused of dumping, but. Yes. Okay. Anything else? That's it. All right. Correspondence. It's a light week on correspondence, uh, except for Lloyd, and I think he's covered all these yes. already. All right. Uh, we do have a copy of a letter here from DES uh, to uh, the uh, property owner of 40-5-3. Uh, this is a waterfront property, uh, and it's a notification that uh, construction that's going on on the property uh, is uh, in violation of uh, the, uh, uh, the Shoreland Protection Act um, in that uh, excessive wetlands are impacted. Um, there's a platform or deck being constructed that overhangs the, the waters of the lake and uh, that uh, that the area within uh, 150 feet of the shoreline has been, has not remained in an unaltered state. So uh, this is information to the town, but... Uh, uh, Did a copy go to the Conservation Commission? It, it uh, went to the Conservation Commission as well as us and the uh, code officer. Uh, the, the CC meets, meets tonight, so... Yep. That is the only correspondence we have uh, for uh, this morning meeting. And do we have any job performance reviews to? We do have a non. We do have a non-public uh, today. For uh, that, I would like to do as soon as we uh, finish business here. Yeah. Okay. Non-public for minutes. Commas. Parentheses C to do a job performance review. Okay. I'll second. Weed yes. Marcus and yes. All the yes. There. Nice, nice job on the cemeteries. Thanks for Keep up the good work. So yeah. <laughs>